Okay, we're recording. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to review the lab for this week. It's Introduction to Circuits Remote Lab. And this is designed so you can work on it um, from the leisure and comfort of your own couch. Uh, this lab uses uh, this FEP simulation here. So let me open that up. We're going to be using this, and I presume we're using the, the intro. Um, but if not, we can just change it. Okay. So our goals. We're going to explore basic relationships in electricity, explore or explain basic electricity relationships in series, what are called series, and what are called parallel circuits. Uh, we're going to use an ammeter and voltmeter to read, to take readings in the circuit, and we're going to provide reasoning uh, or our thoughts, our connections, our explanation to explain the measurements and relationships in the circuits. Consider the pictures of each of these circuits that answer the questions below. First, we have a series circuit. All right, uh, in series, we call this um, circuit in series because every element in the circuit, one follows the next. Okay, so this comes first. If you are electricity traveling through this, you uh, travel through one, then the other, then the other uh, element in a circle. Uh, in a parallel circuit, you have what are called parallel branches in the circuit. You have one branch here, which has the battery, another branch, a parallel branch, which has uh, light bulb three, that's the light bulb, uh, and a, a third branch, which has light bulb four. This, is, this complex circuit, they call it complex, but really it's, it's just a parallel circuit where we've, in this middle branch, we've inserted an extra light bulb. It's really the same as uh, this middle parallel circuit, which has added an extra uh, light bulb in the middle. From the circuits above, pre predict which bulb or bulbs will be the brightest, and why do you think that? And just look at them and try to just come up with some guesstimate, some hypothesis as to which one you will think is the brightest and explain why, why do you think that? Provide some reasoning. This is, there's nothing wrong there. Uh, current is the flow of charge. So you can think of current as, as the rate or the speed that electricity is moving in a circuit. Describe how you think the current will flow different in the different circuits above. And the easiest comparison to make is between series and parallel. If you're current and you have a speed going through the circuit, what will be the difference in your speed between these two circuits? And that's, that's an estimate. And we'll explore that further down, but I just want you to give a hypothesis or a guesstimate as to why you think that, uh, why you give your, um, your description here, or further description you give there. Uh, let's go ahead and explore uh, a little more uh, to further our understanding, and we're going to go to the intro screen, and we're going to build a circuit that shows how you make a light bulb light up, and we're going to figure out how to measure current and voltage, and then we're going to insert an image of our circuit with the current and voltage measured. So let's go here. All right, I'm going to move this down here, and let's make a circuit. If you have a question, you can just pop it over here and I'll be able to see it. Okay. So right now, uh, we're gonna make a circuit that lights up a bulb. And then we're gonna measure the, the voltage and the current through the circuit. Okay. Let me make this a little longer. It's kind of interesting, the simulation, because it shows you those little blue dots there are electrons. Right now, the electrons are moving. And they're not moving, therefore you do not have any current flowing. You'll also notice the light bulb is not on yet. So electricity is not moving. No current. Current, again, is the movement, how fast the electric charge moves. Daddy? Yellow bug. What? Your umbrella's in my trunk. 
So if you, you, you know how to open that. Okay, so now we have electricity moving. My keys are over there, love bug. So now we have electricity moving and the lights on, right? <clears throat> Let's go back here. Uh, we wanna figure out how to measure current and voltage. Well, let's come over here. We have something called a voltmeter and we have an ammeter, all right? Uh, voltmeter will measure voltage. Let's measure the voltage across the light bulb. Now I say across because when you're measuring voltage, you have to measure the voltage across an element or an object. Uh, in this case, we're gonna measure, we're measuring the voltage across the light bulb and also we're measuring the voltage across the, the battery because the battery is hooked up to the bulb. So whatever voltage the battery has, the bulb has because the bulb is connected to the battery. And we can verify that. If we click here, this battery is set to nine volts. And what are we measuring across the light bulb? Nine volts. <clears throat> this, uh, this is being recorded and I'm going to put it on the class website yes uh okay so we're we're measuring the voltage across the light bulb and now let's measure the current uh through the circuit here we go and the current is 0.9 amps so the current's a little different from the voltage with the current what you're doing is you're measuring <clears throat> the flow rate of charge of electric currents of electrons through one uh, point in a wire. That's the, not actually a point because that wire has a cross section, but let's assume it's a point. Uh, and here our current's 0.9 and our voltage is nine. Okay, let's insert an image. Let's insert an image um, and put that into um, the Oh, this is a pain in the butt. All right, where did my, there we go. Let me do it this way. I'm way, my, my desktop's way too messy. Okay. I hope that's the last time I do that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> there we go. And there's our image. So we built the circuit. We figured out how to measure the voltage of current. And um, yeah. And we inserted a picture here. That's oh, sorry, I'll leave it there and I'll, I'll make it large so you can actually see it. <clears throat> All right, imagine you're an engineer making a string of battery powered holiday lights. Wow, Th this, this question gets old. This question gets answered, gets asked every time we study series and parallel circuits. So we, we need to think of a better question. Uh, if a bulb burns out, current cannot flow through the bulb any longer. Like if the wire had been cut. Okay, like if the wire at the bulb had been cut. Figure out how to hook up two bulbs in the battery so that when one bulb burns out um, or is disconnected, the other still stays lit. All right, did we skip something here? Um, no, we did one, two, three. Okay, yeah, we are on four. Okay, so let's go here. Let's see here. Let me go here. Okay. So um, let's reset this. Let's, um, we want to light two bulbs. Um, and we want, so that if we cut the electricity to one bulb, the other one still stays on. Let's see, so let's connect two bulbs. Um, and we can do it, let's do the series circuit first. That's the first one. 
uh, from the graphic. Okay, and here we go. Boom. All right, we got two. And let's cut the connection to one. Oh, they both go out, right? Because you create one opening in the circuit, the electricity cannot jump across that gap. All right. Uh, so and it, that prevents all current from flowing in the circuit. Let's go close that. Um, let's now figure out a different way. We want to connect this second bulb here um, so that um, when we cut the connection to one, the other one still stays lit. We saw earlier that there were two types of circuits that we were exploring. Um, uh, the first one being series, the second one being parallel. Let's connect, let's make a parallel circuit and see what happens. All right, so let's bring this over and connect this. We just want, in order for a component like a light bulb to be active, it needs energy from the battery. So we need to connect the component back to the battery. And what you'll notice is, you know, one thing I didn't mention before is that this component, this light bulb, um, is um hold on i'm still getting one student that um okay um trying to get on but they must have the wrong link All right, uh, let's see here. So for a component to be lit, it once that you have two terminals here. So one terminal must be connected to one side of the battery. The other terminal must be connected to the opposite side or the opposing side of the battery. Okay, and that's how we get energy. If I take this <clears throat> and connect this to this side of the battery, well, they're both on the same side of the battery. This This will not be... Uh, there won't be any sort of current flowing uh, through through this uh, component. So now back to the question. Uh, we want to create a circuit where if we cut the electricity to one, the other stays lit. So that's a parallel circuit. A parallel circuit is where every uh, component uh, in the circuit has its own unique connection to the battery. Okay. Uh, so that if one connection is broken, the other elements or components in that circuit still have their own ability to draw current from the battery. Okay, that's a parallel circuit. Your house is like that. Uh, every room in your house uh, is on its own circuit, its own parallel branch to the uh, power lines running into your house. So if I turn off the lights in my living room, <clears throat> I can still have the ability to turn on the lights uh, in my bedroom, bathroom, living room, kitchen, dining room, what have you. They're all independent from one another because they all have their own unique connections to our power source in our house. Okay, so um, in number four, insert an image to illustrate that your circuit uh, works as you think. So I'll just... In you know, I'll do this, I'll put that there. I'll just drop it in there later. Ah, we'll do it now. As cumbersome of a process as it is, we'll, we'll drop it in now. Let's see here. Perfect. That wasn't so bad. <clears throat> okay. So, well, the second bulb has its own unique connection to the battery. 
therefore, uh, when the uh, connection uh, to the first bulb is cut, uh, the second bulb uh, will maintain uh, its contact or connections uh, with uh, the battery. Okay, imagine that you want to make sure the battery you are using for your string of lights will last as long as possible. A battery will last longer uh, if the power, if it powers a circuit with low current, right? You can, you can think of a battery as having a finite number of electrons in it, right? So, If you have a high current, you're going to be drawing those electrons out of the battery faster um, than if you have a low current. And if you have a fast current, let's say you have 100 electrons, you have a fast current, you're going to draw out the 100 electrons pretty fast. Low current uh, will allow you to maintain, you know, that battery life for much longer. All right. Uh, one of the things that, for example, cell phone manufacturers have been working on for a long time. Uh, it's sort of like a twofold problem. One, for the longest time, we haven't had batteries that can hold a lot of electrons for us, right? So we've had pretty uh, weak batteries in terms of capacity. The milliamp hours on a battery or the amp hours of battery has been relatively low uh, for a while, at least compared to what we have now. Um, but, and then the flip side of that is we have a lot of components on phones and other devices which use up a lot of current or a lot of energy pretty quickly. So the screen on your phone, for example, uses most of the energy from your battery. So for a long time, cell phones in the early 2000s, you could only talk on your phone for about, you know, tens of minutes, you know, 20 minutes before the battery would just, that's it, you're done, right? Uh, and, you know, the screens early on weren't as demanding, but the RF, the, the radio frequency stuff, like the antenna, uh, basically what's getting your voice to the cell phone tower, that required a lot of energy. And the batteries are pretty weak, okay? Um, so what we've done is we've created circuits now, screens that have really low amperage and low voltage requirements, all right? and batteries that have a lot of capacity, the ability to store a lot of energy. <clears throat> so what we want to do is we want a battery that will last longer. How could you hook up two, a battery and two light bulbs so the least amount of current flows through the battery? All right, use the measurement tool in the simulation to check your design. All right, uh, so we did uh, this first step. Uh, now let's do the second question. And we, we already created uh, one circuit uh, with two bulbs lit. And now let's create a, another circuit. Um, and let's, let's measure, just so that we're all on the same page, let's measure the current coming out of the battery because that's what we care about. How quickly are we draining that battery? So I'm gonna create the series version of this circuit where the light bulbs are in series and there's a million different ways to draw these circuits. I could, I could cut this and put a wire in here and make it more boxy. It really doesn't matter uh, what it looks like uh, as long as there's just one path for the series and for the parallel, uh, more than one path, one path per component. Um, let's see here. All right, and we care about the current. We don't care about the voltage. This is a nine volt battery, nine volts. This is a nine volt battery. So we know we have nine volts in each. Let's talk about the current. All right. Okay. Ah, okay. Right now we can already see a big difference in terms of what's coming out of the battery. So right here and right here. So, 
again, just to reiterate, how could you hook up to uh, hook up a battery to two light bulbs so the least amount of current flows through the battery? Right, again, we are focused on the battery. Use a measurement tool in your simulation right, and insert an image. <clears throat> All right, let's, we're measuring the current. So let's put 1.8 there. And yeah, 0 0.45, 1.8, 0.45. All right, so this battery, because the current's flowing out of it more quickly, this battery is gonna drain. You're gonna replace this battery much more often than this battery, all right. Um, and you can kind of also see that in the light output. So the, the luminous output on these two bu uh, bulbs is, is much brighter than these two. And what that means is you're expending, you're, you're outputting more energy and light, and that requires more energy coming into the bulbs, right? Here, your luminous output is really low. Your light output's low. Therefore, the, the energy coming in to, to make that light flow. So you're going to have a low energy requirement in this circuit. So we have 0.45 here, and it was you know, 1.8 there. So that's my coffee. All right. And yeah, picture of this too. And why is that? So in in this circuit here, we have two bulbs in series. And what that means is that the current has to go through one bulb, then go through another. And now it's not easy for an electron to go through these elements. These elements provide some sort of resistance to them. They go through there. And the reason you're making light is because the electrons have so much resistance going through that light bulb that it heats up the wire to a point where it's so hot it starts radiating light and you can you can make it um you know absent of any sort of combustive ambient you can make just about anything anything glow red hot if you put enough energy into it all right the problem is most things usually combust before they start glowing red hot but if you can shake the atoms uh, within an object fast enough, then that thing will start emitting radiation, uh, emitting light. Um, and here, the electrons are going pretty slow, so they're not having a lot of interactions with the atoms in the wire, in the bulb, and therefore the atoms are not getting knocked around as much, and the wire is not heating up as much, and you're not getting as much light coming out. Whereas here, you have much, much uh, more current coming through each bulb. That means the, uh, the atoms are getting knocked around a little bit more by that moving, those moving electrons. Uh, you get more vibrating in those atoms and more light coming off. Um, and so here, the, you know, the reason this has lower current is because we have more resistance. So we have lower current in the series circuit because we have more combined resistance from the two light bulbs in series. And I know that's a lot, that's a lot to digest right now. We, we, we haven't really talked about um you know what is resistance what is uh what is current what is voltage what are all these things my hope is next week we can explore that a little bit more so i think i'm going to set up next week to look at more uh, voltage current resistance combined okay let's come down here all right so your goal in this part is to write rules to describe how patterns of oh, okay all right uh let's see here hold on one second Let me share oh wait 
Hey, love bugs. Um, if it's too rainy. Okay. Um, copy. Okay. Right, one second. Oh, watch out. Copy love. All right. Sorry about that. How's your walk? Good. Good. And are coming. Oh, okay. Right okay, hold on one second, my boy. I gotta work here. All right, so um, for developing our understanding part two, your goal in this part is to hold on one second because now the issue is going to be in seeing participants. There we go. All right. And let's get the chat. All right. Okay, I think we're ready to continue. All right, your goal in this part is to write the rules to describe how patterns of current voltage in a circuit relate to the structure of the circuit. You will need to measure current voltage in multiple places uh, on several different circuits. Okay, so let's make this circuit. All right. Um, use the table below to record your measurements and patterns you notice. You will decide uh, where will be the most useful place to make measurements and how you will and how you will take, uh, and how many you will take. Okay, so we have yeah, a few circuits. All right. All right, number one. So we're going to make this simple circuit. Um, let's see here. All right, let's go here. Let us reset. And we are going to make a simple circuit. Okay. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. I'm going to make it a little different. I'm going to make it so that um, it's just a little smaller. And it doesn't really, it doesn't make any difference. All right. Okay, boom, lights on. That and this are the same circuit. You can have as much wire as you want or as little wire, as long as there's one loop, one pass, it's the same circuit. Let's measure um, let's measure the the current. Current's point nine. Zero point nine amps. Um, the voltage AB. So we'll measure the voltage between. I'm going to say A and B being um, here and here. Nine volts. All right, nine volts. Nine volts. Nine volts. What patterns? Uh, uh, where is the current the same? So the current is the same everywhere. Let's look what I mean by that. Um, no matter where I put this, the current is always 0.9. Um, where, is the, where does the voltage change? Where uh, doesn't it change? Voltage is the same. Remember, it's nine volts here, it's nine volts across the battery. Uh, okay, and how do the different circuits compare? Well, we haven't really compared to the other circuits. So let's just move on.
Okay. Guess we could record more. Did my mouse go out? Oh, there we go. All right, series circuit with two bulbs. So now I'm gonna insert a second bulb here. Cut that and I'm gonna put in another light bulb there. So this is very similar to some experiments that my daughter and I did using the little snap kit, right? Okay, so we are going to measure the voltage. We're going to measure the voltage of the battery. Nine volts. It's negative because I put the terminals on opposite sides of the battery. One's positive, red is positive, black is negative. If I put red on positive and black on negative, side of the battery, then I'll read a positive reading. If I flip them, I'll read a negative reading. Mm -hmm. um, so V battery, so I'll call this V bat. So v, uh, v bat uh, equals nine volts. Uh, the voltage of the first light bulb is 4.5 volts. V bulb. 4.5 volts. I'll call that V bulb one, the first bulb. And V bulb two. Hmm. Equals, let's see here. Also 4.5 volts. Interesting. So the voltage across these two, 4.5, 4.5 equals nine. Interesting. So the total voltage of the battery is actually being divided across these two. Let's measure the current everywhere. Current is 0.45 everywhere. Current, we actually don't use the variable C. We use the variable I for current. And it was 0 0.45 amps. So the voltage, well, the current is the same everywhere. The voltage uh, is different uh, across the two components. And also, so let's compare the, so the current in this uh, circuit is lower. Now make a parallel circuit. We set this. So we have this. We're making a parallel circuit here is it raining outside I guess. Um, too much where's the baby is the baby somewhere on the walk she's reading a book all right I've got a baby that reads Boom, parallel circuit. My goodness, we are gonna see a profound, uh, or make a profound observation. So the current was the same everywhere in a series circuit. Let's just take a mental note of that. Uh, series circuit, the current was the same everywhere because there's only one path, all right? Uh, all right, now let's make some, make some, recordings, make some observations here. So 
Uh, let's start with voltage. Voltage across the battery is 9 volts. Voltage across this light bulb is 9 volts. Voltage across this battery is 9 volts. All right. That's pretty different from what we saw in the series circuit. In the series circuit, that voltage was divided across the light bulb. So here in a parallel circuit, each light bulb has its own unique connection to the battery. So the voltage is 9 volts. So the battery equals 9 volts. And the bulb, oh, let's do it this way. This will be cool just to prove our point. V battery equals V bulb uh, 1 equals V bulb 2, which equals 9 volts. They're all the same. Uh, now the current, this will be a little different. So the current through the battery, let's record that. The current through the bulb one and the current through bulb uh, two. Let's see what that is. So the current through the battery is 1.8. That's a lot of amps, 1.8 amps. The current through the second or first bulb is 0.9. Now see if you can make a prediction. If this is 0.9, the total current through the battery is 1.8. The current through the first bulb is 0.9. What should the current through the second bulb be? Now they both need to add up to be 1.8, so this one's also going to be 0.9. <clears throat> Observation. So um, the voltage is the same everywhere. The current is different uh, throughout the circuit. I'm working from the construction site. All right. So, all right, what are some differences we see? So, the let's see. The current is higher. Uh in a parallel circuit versus a series circuit. Let's go on to this complex circuit. All right. And for this one, I'm just going to cut this and add a bulb here. Uh, I don't want to give anyone a hard attack. So I'll try to make it close to what we see in that picture. Uh, let's see here. Okay, yeah, here's what we have. Let's measure the voltage everywhere. Um, and let's do it this way. Let me, let me well, I won't do that yet. But. All right, voltage of battery. Nine volts. Voltage of this bulb. 9 volts. Voltage of this bulb. 4.5 voltage of this bulb. 4.5. So, interestingly enough, these two together are sharing the 9, volt, nine volts that they are connected to across the battery, right? So, if you and if these two bulbs are exactly the same, then they're going to be dividing. Um, that voltage equally amongst themselves. So if it's nine, then one will get 4.5 and the other will get 4.5. Uh, so I could smell the ozone from the rain. Smells good. Oh, you don't want to smell too much ozone. It's highly reactive. Uh, it'll mess something up. So the voltage of the battery is, uh, was nine. The uh, voltage of battery or bulb one was nine, the voltage of bulb two was 4.5, and the voltage of bulb three was 
Uh, also 4.5. Let me call this three. Uh, current current gets more complicated. So um, let's see here, and you know these numbers aren't the same, but I'm just setting myself up to record. Okay. All right, current. So the current through the battery is 1.35. The current through the first bulb is 0.9. <clears throat> oh, that works. And the current through these two over here is 0.45. So 0.45, 0.45. Wonderful. Okay. So the voltage is not the same. Current is not the same everywhere. And what do we see? Um, in terms of observations, um, you know, this circuit seems to have characteristics of both series and parallel uh, circuits. Well, that's pretty cool. Most complex circuits basically, you know, as a series in parallel had a baby. All right. Oh, now we're reaching the end. Oh, oh, oh no, we're just testing our prediction. Dang, a lot more to do. All right. <clears throat> Compare the patterns you see in a series circuit to the ones you see in a parallel and complex circuit. Write rules about the voltage you see. So. I love sentence frames. Makes my life easier. Um, in a series circuit, I see that the current uh, is the same everywhere. Whereas in the circuit, I see that the current is different for each component in the circuit. Oh man, I'm good. It's not like I have a PhD in this. Hmm, interesting. All right, let me see what's going on here. I have people trying to get into the meeting, but they cannot. So, invite. Copy invitation. Hmm. So let's try this again. Uh, now that was for current. Let us now talk about voltage because we are talking about current and what voltage. Worst place to sneeze is when you go grocery shopping. People will look at you weird. In the series circuit, I see that the voltage is this. In the series circuit, the voltage is, is not the same everywhere. We saw that in a series circuit, the voltage is different across the different components. Um, is different across the different components. Components are just the different parts in the circuit. It's not, not no complicated language there. Whereas in a parallel circuit, I see that the voltage is the same for each component in the circuit. All right, man, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, me. All right, let's test your understanding. Predict the rules. Um, 
predict from your rules above the order of the bulbs in these circuits from brightest to dimmest. Um, some bulbs might be the same brightness. Okay, so let's group them. So the brightest ones are the ones that are going to have their own direct contact to the, um, what do I want to say, to the battery, right? So which ones have direct contact? Let's go brightest here, brightest. Um, would be one and six. They have um, their own direct connection to the battery. Next brightest, I would say, would be any light bulbs that are sharing a connection uh, with the uh, battery. Um, and let's go with, uh, this is interesting, this is tricky <clears throat> because in this case, seven is actually um, uh, seven um, or eight and nine. Why is there seven? Um, eight and nine are in parallel. That effectively does what what I want to call it is reduces the resistance of those two. So that means if you're comparing seven to uh, this here, then seven's gonna be the next brightest. You'd have to make that to see it. So you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore it. That's a complicated scenario. All right. And if you want to talk more about that, we can talk more about that. But that's more of like an AP scenario. Um, so let's do it this way. So the next brightest would be the ones that are not directly connected to the battery. So it would be uh, two, three, four, and five. Two, three, four, and five would all have the same brightness. If we go back here, though, and let's look at this. We got to insert seven, eight, uh, and nine somewhere in this. Are they going to be the next, next brightest, or the dimmest, or are they going to be the uh, in between? And let's let's try to reason this out. Okay, so eight and nine in in parallel like this means that they're going to have uh, pretty low resistance. All right, and then if you combine that with seven, let's let's make this circuit. So. Oh, let me just reset it. And a, a nested parallel. Ooh. I love you too, love bug, but I gotta work right now. Hold on. Do you love me? Circuit theory. All right, I'll just connect these. Okay. Interesting. All right, let's look at this. So if I if I just cut this, it effectively becomes a parallel circuit. Uh, but now if I go ahead and yeah, it's as I sus suspected, right? So uh, the let's see. so seven is actually so if we compare this to um, this, if I take this out, cut it. Uh, seven. Watch what happens to seven. It becomes the brightest now, right? What ends up happening is these two combined offer a pretty low resistance, lower than this circuit here. That means that this light bulb will get a bigger share of the battery. So if I cut this up again, right, these two are equally sharing the energy or the voltage from the battery. 
That means they're going to shine just as bright as one another. But now these two are parallel. That means they need to split the portion they're getting. So if they're splitting the voltage that they're getting from the battery, they're going to each be dimmer. And this one will be brighter than those two because it doesn't have to split it. In fact, it actually gets more because these two combined have a, a reduced resistance. Uh, and let's see here. So the seven will actually be what I'll call the next brightest. And next, next brightest. And then the dimmest will be uh, eight. Nine. I don't know if that nomenclature is any good. After you make your rankings, build circuits to check your answers. Um, so you can do that. Did your rules allow you to correctly rank them? Uh, you can respond to that. Did you use any meters to help you make your list? If so, why? So if you did, then you can explain why. Okay. If you want to make a flashlight and have two batteries and a light bulb, uh, predict how you could hook them up to make the brightest flashlight and explain why and then build a circuit to check your answer. So if you want to uh, make a flashlight and you have two batteries and light bulb, figure out a way to connect them so you have the, the brightest, the brightest light. All right, so you have two batteries in the bulb. And just experiment with that. Play around with it and try to get this bulb to be the, the brightest that you can, okay? I'm gonna cut it there because we've been, we've been at this for a while and I don't like making these videos over a half hour and I feel like we're, we're probably well over that. All right, you take care. Uh, I'm going to call it quits for this session. Um, make sure you submit that lab by Friday, and I'll be posting this video shortly. All right, I'm going to end the recording.